In this module we're going to have a look at mechanisms of injury, kinetics, basically what happens and how we pick up injuries from the kinetics of the actual accident. The accidents can happen for all different reasons, from fall from height to impact from motorcycles, car crashes. Every single scenario you ever go to will be different and we have to look at the wreckage, we have to read the scenario and we have to pick out what we're going to deal with first, where the critical injuries come from, who we're going to deal with, number of casualties, areas, safety procedures and everything else that goes with the initial assessment. So the first thing we always have to take care of and look at is safety. Am I safe first of all? to make sure that I'm not going to get into any dangers because an injured or damaged rescuer is going to be no use at all to the patient. So safety. We're looking at electrics, we're looking at water, we're looking at falling from objects, falling from height. We're looking at how I'm going to keep myself safe. That's the number one priority. The second priority then becomes the patient themselves. How are we going to keep the patient safe? Do we need to move them? Can we move them? Have we got any way we can move them or do we need extra resources on scene? Is it fire? Is it police? Is it bystander help we need? Or, you know, what are the vehicles and mechanical aids do we need on scene? And those need to be called for early rather than waiting until time is becoming short. The next thing we look at, and a method that I've developed that works quite well, is to use a jigsaw approach. As you arrive at the scene, don't ever rush in. Don't rush to, to deal with things that become obvious. Obvious injuries quite often aren't the worst. We need to actually take a piece by piece approach and, and it's the same as building a jigsaw puzzle. If you rush in, you miss the picture. From walking into a scene, you can see skid marks on road surfaces, you can see speeds, you can see impact zones on trees, hedges, on patients. You actually start to build the picture of what has happened in your head before you actually even get to the patient. The next really important thing is bystander information, feedback. Is the picture in your head matching what the bystanders are telling you? And if it is, then we start to make things much, much easier with where the injuries are going to occur on the patient because now we can read wreckage, we can, lead, we can actually read what's gone on on scene and start to make that picture make sense. We've talked about using the jigsaw approach and the jigsaw approach works very effectively because it starts to build the picture bit by bit. You can't make, make a diagnosis on anybody or any scene by one thing. We have to build that picture and we've talked about bystander information. We now start to put that information into a bigger picture on the car, on the wreckage and the wreckage onto the patient. Side impacts, if there's a passenger in the car then we start to look at the side impact. If it's been on the side that the passenger's on then the passenger's going to have potentially serious injuries. Whereas if it's on the passenger side and there's only a driver in the car then the driver's potentially going to have less serious injuries but nevertheless we then have to start to assess the scene itself and assess the injury when we get to it. So a lot of your work starts way before you actually get to the patient. It should start as you approach the scene, even before you get out of your vehicle, whether it's a car, a fire truck, an ambulance or a helicopter. You are weighing up the scene long before you actually get to the patient and that information is critical to deciding which patient is going to be the worst injured, which patient is going to be your number one priority and then you finally put the icing on the cake. When you get to your patients, you then do your time critical assessment of each individual patient and triage the situation and then you start to work.